Hey guys, it is uh, week 13, or actually week 14, but the 13th lesson that we're on together. I know that uh, we are still uh, sort of sequestered in our homes, but anyhow, I hope things are going pretty well for you. Um, today, our verse is Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, and it is this, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, it's an interesting verse. I know a lot of people have um, quoted it through time, and it's used like in a time of struggling sometimes, maybe similar to what we're going through now. It's used as an opportunity to encourage or to encourage your own self. When I look at this verse, let's just break it down for a moment. If you have your Bible, just turn it uh, over to Philippians 1.6 just for a moment. <clears throat> And it says, being confident of this very thing. You know, there's not many things we can be really confident in today. Um, a lot of people are concerned about their job. Maybe they're concerned about the future. Uh, possibly they're concerned about the, you know, the economy. Uh, a lot of different things are kind of up in the air right now. Uh, and so sometimes we're not even confident in our own abilities. I can remember as a young man and, and, and the things that sometimes I would do, I, I felt like I was confident in my own ability. Uh, but when it came right down to it, then there, I, I lacked a lot of confidence as I grew to understand uh, some of my actions. Uh, <clears throat> but so a lot of things we can't take confidence in. But here's <clears throat> one thing he's saying uh, to understand our salvation and the struggle to say, yeah, okay, am I saved? Is God going to be able to keep me? Uh, you know, is it worth it? Well, we can be confident in that. We can know that we're saved. We can understand that he's coming to our heart. He lives within us in the presence of his Holy Spirit. We feel it in our lives, and we can be confident in this, that it is he who begun the work in us. It's not of ourselves. It's not something that we <coughs> did on our own. Uh, we know that God found us. We didn't find him. He initiated the work. He, he has called us into this work. <coughs> we didn't necessarily do it. Although sometimes when we hear people's testimonies about coming to Christ, they'd say, well, I did this. I trusted Jesus. I repented. I, 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 I thought about it and all those things. But really, when we look at it, we understand, yeah, we had a part. We received and uh, uh, we heard from him, but it was him that uh, drew us to him. Uh, the Bible says that no man comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. Um, so do you remember that good work that he did in your life, that he started in your life when you were saved uh, many years ago? And, and he began to work inside of your heart. And, and uh, he, it's, it's this, know this, that if he began it, if he's the one that started it, then he'll be the one to finish it. Um, See, if we started it, <clears throat> then it would be our responsibility to keep it up and keep moving, keep going forward. But think about it, spiritually speaking, think about it. If we were dead in our sins, how could we have started anything? Because, hey, dead people can't start anything. Matter of fact, dead people can't even see spiritual things at all. Uh, the Bible says that we were dead in our sins in Romans uh, chapter 6, uh, that, uh, that that the gospel was veiled to us because our eyes were blinded in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, 3 and 4, it talks about that, and, and because the, the God of this world had blinded our eyes, and and so um, we considered those kind of things uh, foolish. We, we considered spiritual matters foolish when we were blinded to those things. Um, it says in Psalms 51 that uh, what the unrighteous were shaped in iniquity and conceived in sin. And it says in Isaiah 53, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. And so if we're in that state, a blind state, a veiled in our mind, uh, a veiled in our ability to comprehend, uh, if we were unrighteous and uh, we were walking away from God, then how did we do the work of salvation? <clears throat> it was he who saw us in our sin, saw us and opened our eyes through the Holy Spirit and drew us to him 
and then uh, now we're no longer unresponsive and we're no longer unperceptive or unteachable or unrighteous but instead now God living within us in the presence of the Holy Spirit makes us more able to perceive more able to respond to the gospel uh, uh, perceive the things of God uh, be teachable uh, live in righteousness and those things and so we can conclude then that Look, the origin of our salvation is not us. It is God. So when you see this scripture and it says um, that, hey, be confident in what? In he who begun a good work in you. That's the origin of your salvation. You can be confident in that origin. And then you can also be confident in the outcome of that salvation that you've received from God. It says, look, he who begun a good work in you, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so we know in that, that that we're secure. Okay, I don't have to sit around and wonder, am I going to be able to accomplish this? Am I going to be able to be good enough? Am I going to be able to give enough or be kind enough or whatever? Uh, it's God that's going to continue to work in my life. We're not saved by performing good works, and therefore we're not kept by performing good works. It's him who does the work um, uh, of keeping us. You know, <clears throat> when I was teaching my kids, and I, well, first of all, I can remember learning how to ride a bicycle in the parking lot of a church called Piney Grove Baptist Church in Atlanta, Texas. And I was being taught how, and uh, they would push you and, and let you go. And uh, I, I can remember more recently how I've helped my grandkids and my kids learn how to ride a bicycle. And I would push them and let them go. But many times they might not have known that I was running alongside of them. Uh, I was tired, but yes, I was running alongside of them. I was not going to let them go on their own until I knew, until I was confident that they could uh, maintain their balance. And so I, I ran alongside. And here's the thing that I know. That God, he gives us salvation, he brings it to us, and he, the outcome of it is going to be good because he said he's, he is going to complete what he started in us. He runs alongside of us. Yes, he gives us some independence. Yes, we, it seems like we're making choices, and, and we do, and sometimes bad, but hopefully mostly good. But he's there with us the whole way running alongside, ready to catch us. Uh, now, will he catch us every time? Uh, especially when we make mistakes on our own and, and we follow after our own desires or we walk away from him. No, sometimes he'll let us fall in order that we might look back to him. And, um, you know, I don't know if this is a time in our world history or not that we should be uh, able to say, man, we're, we're falling right now. Or we possibly could see how we could fall. Um, and if that's the case, I hope it brings about a revival to be able to say, hey, uh, let us understand that uh, the outcome of our salvation or the outcome of our life, even if you're not saved, the outcome of your life is uh, uh, dependent on Jesus Christ. And uh, for those who are saved, know this, he will complete what he started in you. Uh, so we can remember this scripture today. Understand our salvation by remembering the scripture from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Being comp confident of this very thing, that he who begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God bless you and have a good week and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.